All right, guys, do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you're new to the channel and if you enjoyed this video. So, uh, I actually saw this news yesterday, but uh, I just didn't have the time to sit down and actually record the video reporting this news. But I'm going to do it now anyway. I'm, I'm going to be quoting Anthony Joshua. Wilder's just starving the fans from an undisputed fight. People assume we were the ones dodging. They did a great campaign to make a name off the back of our success. With all that talk and none of them have stopped have stepped up to fight. Now, I definitely agree with Anthony Joshua when it comes to Wilder uh, prolonging the fight. Uh, this year was definitely the year where Wilder 100% ducked Anthony Joshua. All right? Forget about the year 2017, 2018. I'm talking about this year. Okay? This year, 100%, it was Josh, it was uh, Wilder's fault that this fight didn't happen. This fight could have happened this year. Okay, Wilder could have fought AJ in September. He could have fought AJ September. Had he signed the DAZN deal, he would have gone through with fighting Dominic Brazil on May 18th. He, had he been in Dominic Brazil, he would have gone through with then fighting Anthony Joshua, probably September. And then he would have rematched Anthony Joshua, probably in April of uh, 2020. So by, tw so by April 2020, we would have had two fights with Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder. And we would have had an, and we would have had an undisputed heavyweight champion. So it is true when Anthony Joshua says that Wilder was the one that dodged him. At least this year. This year, 2019, was 100% Wilder's fault for this fight not you know coming through. He says he wanted to fight. And I do agree with him when he says, I believe him. I mean, I believe him when he says he wanted this fight. Because why would he let allow, you know, Eddie Hearn and the zone to offer Wilder a $100 million purse to back-to-back -to -back fight deal to fight him? If he didn't want this fight, he would have told, you know, the zone, hey, don't, don't give him that offer. I'm not going to take this fight. But that didn't happen, right? He allowed it. The same thing with, you know, Luis Ortiz. He could have told Eddie Hearn, listen, don't offer him anything. I don't want to fight him. But, you know, he allowed, you know, because you know how Eddie Hearn, and I'm saying he allowed Eddie Hearn because Eddie Hearn always says that Anthony Joshua is his boss. You know what I'm saying? He, you know, Anthony Joshua is the one that calls the shots. So that's why I'm saying he allowed Eddie Hearn to, uh, you know, offer Luis Ortiz that $7 million payday. Um, so, again, we're going to have to wait and see. We're going to have to wait for a long time. Um, so, and and it does, it sucks for us, the fans, because we all want to see this fight. And if these two, if, if Wilder keeps prolonging this fight, what, what could end up happening is one of them could lose. And if that happens, it might kill the fight, right? It might kill the fight. I mean, imagine if Deontay Wilder, imagine if Deontay Wilder got knocked out against Brazil in his next fight. I mean, just imagine that. Imagine the fifth round comes and, you know, Wilder knocks out Brazil. Right? I mean, Brazil knocks out Wilder. You know, what What, what would be the reaction of, of, of fans who want to see Wilder versus Anthony Joshua? First of all, you know, they'll be like, okay, they'll be mocking. The, a bunch of fans will be making fun of Deontay Wilder. And then a bunch of fans will be comparing how Dominic Brazil was able to beat Deontay Wilder. But Joshua, on the other hand, schooled him. Right? It wouldn't be the same. First of all, J Wilder would probably be trying to fight Brazil in a rematch. It would kill the buzz. You know, these two are undefeated. They're champions. They're big punchers. This is a big selling point for this fight. You know, one guy's a, a big trash talker in Deontay Wilder. You know how he says, I want them to shut me up. You know, he talks a lot of trash, so that's going to help sell the fight. But if they see that he loses a fight, it's going to kill the, the, the buzz for that fight. There, there'll probably be still hardcore fans who want to see the fight, but if he loses, like, I personally want to see, if if I, if I want to see, if, if I want someone to beat Deontay Wilder, I would want it to be Anthony Joshua. I would want it to be Anthony Joshua. Not some other guy. Okay? Same thing for Anthony Joshua. I would want the guy to beat Anthony Joshua to be Wilder. If he were to be Anthony Joshua instead of some other guy. Like, let's say, you know, he fights Alexander Usyk down the line and then Alexander Usyk beats him. That's great for Alexander Usyk, but, you know, 
Alexander Yuzik was a cruiserweight, it would have been great to see. And he was a guy challenging for Anthony Joshua's, you know, unified belt. So it would have been great to see Wilder, a champion, uh, be the one to beat the, uh, Anthony Joshua, right? The same thing goes for if it was if Anthony Joshua were the first guy to beat Deontay Wilder. Imagine if Deontay Wilder fought, um, I don't know, Luis Ortiz or Adam Konaki next, and then he loses, right? He lost against a, a challenger, a contender, a guy he already beat in Luis Ortiz, right? It would, it would, it, for me as a fan, it would make me feel way better if I, if it was Anthony Joshua the one to dethrone Deontay Wilder. Because another thing about these, these two potentially losing in the future, if they keep stalling this fight, is when a fighter loses. Okay, when a fighter loses, who's unbeaten, then, uh, when another fighter fights him and beats him, you know what they say? He was over the hill. He hasn't been the same since that knockout. They say that as an excuse to not give the guy credit. So let's say Deontay Wilder fought Adam Kornacki next. And let's say by some chance Adam Kornacki beats him and he, th and he throws him. Then let's say Deontay Wilder fights Adam Kornacki in a rematch. And he knocks him out. And he regains the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Then let's say they make the Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder fight. And let's say Deontay Wilder gets knocked out by Anthony Joshua. There will be several people saying, oh, you see the thing is... In that first Kornacki fight, you see those two Kornacki fights, they took a lot of out of Wilder. They, they took a lot out of Wilder. You see, he got knocked out in the first fight, and the second fight, he almost lost. It was a tough fight for him before he caught Kornacki with that right hand that took him out. You see, those two fights took a lot out of Wilder. Do you remember when Mike Tyson uh, beat uh, Razor Ruddick, right? And back in 1991, right? I wasn't even born then, but I, obviously I'm a history boxing uh, heavyweight history buff. I saw the, the the fights. Do you remember how Mike Tyson beat, like I said, uh, Razor Ruddick, right? He had two back-to-back -back tough fights with Razor Ruddick where he beat him twice, right? Then he, Razor Ruddick fights Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis destroys Razor Ruddick in two rounds. He does a way better job than Mike Tyson. Remember, Mike Tyson... Fought him, fought Razor Ruddick twice, and they won several rounds. You know, he didn't knock him out in two rounds, in one round. They won several rounds. Matter of fact, the first fight was so competitive that they made a rematch immediately. They immediately made a rematch that same year because the first fight was so competitive. But look what happened when uh, Lennox Lewis, uh, the line, destroyed Razor Ruddick in fat, you know, because like a year later, Razor Ruddick fought uh, Lennox Lewis and he got destroyed by Lennox Lewis. Look what happened. When that happened, you would think people would be praising him. Wow, at least when they compare Lennox Lewis's performance to Razor Reddick against Mike Tyson's performance, right? You would think they would be praising him, right? But there was a bunch of people saying, oh, you know, the, the only reason that Lennox Lewis uh, did a great job and disposed of uh, Razor Reddick way quicker than uh, Mike Tyson did was because he was damaged goods. He had those two back-to-back -back fights with uh, Mike Tyson, and that took everything out of him. That took everything out of him. Right, so they didn't want to give uh, Lennox Lewis credit because they were basically trying to give excuses to as to why Mike Tyson took longer uh, to fight that guy. I mean, took took longer to take him to get rid of him. You know, to basically knock him out. Oh, he was damaged good. That that's the same exact is exact bullshit they'll say to, if Anthony Joshua fought Wilder after Wilder had a few losses or got knocked out. They'll say he's damaged goods. They wouldn't give him credit. You know? They wouldn't. So that's why um I really hope these guys fight sooner than later. You know? I really hope Deontay Wilder does not I, I already told you guys a hundred times. The latest I want to see this fight is twenty twenty. I don't want it to be twenty twenty one these guys fight. Cause by at that point Wilder will be thirty six and everybody will say he's over the hill. He's washed up. Of course, Anthony Joshua is going to beat him. He's washed up. They're going to try to discredit Anthony Joshua if he beats him. So, like I said, 2020, I would love, I would have loved if it happened this year. But, you know, while they prolonged the fight. 2020 is the, the latest, guys. Anyway, guys, I have to say, uh, do you agree with Anthony Joshua? Do you think that it is Wilder and this is the reason why this fight is being prolonged? This undisputed fight? Let me know in the comment section below of this video. I, I certainly do. Anyway, guys, subscribe if you're new to the channel. And uh, yeah, I'm out, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.